The following opinions are solely those of Boatest.com and its test captain. Hi, Captain Steve from Boatest.com, and today we're going to be looking at a boat from Beneteau that is popular in Europe and is now making her North American debut as part of a three-boat outboard lineup. Abroad, she's called the Antares 8. Here, she's the 23. Let's start our features review and performance evaluation by looking at the layout of the Antares 23. At the stern, dual platforms flank the outboard power and we step across from one to the other. To starboard, there's a recessed four-step reboarding ladder with a grab handle right alongside. The reboarding is to starboard as this is also the side of the cockpit boarding gate. For engines, Mercury is the power of choice with 200 horsepower as the max offered for this boat. At the cockpit entry, a wet storage compartment is concealed under a hatch and its self-draining overboard. A minimalist gate closes off the 14-inch wide walkthrough. A pinch latch holds the gate open. The cockpit gatherings will take place among a U-shaped settee to port that wraps around a solid wood table on a single pedestal. The area can be protected by an overhead bimini. There's storage under the side and forward seats and mechanical access and additional storage is under the deck. By reaching under and lifting these support legs out of the way, the aft seat back now slides fore and aft to allow the engine to tilt out of the water, making a clever use of available space. When sliding forward, the legs automatically drop on the gas struts, but for sliding back, you hold both up when pushing the seat aft. And of course, the entire area can be converted into a sun pad. Even with a symmetrical layout, the bow will be easier accessed from a 12-inch wide side deck to starboard because of the step where to port their seating. Both sides include a grab rail atop the cabin. Forward, the trunk cabin is covered in a full-width sun pad made up of five separate sections for easy handling and storage. Fully forward, the anchor is suspended from an extended davit under an 18-inch split and the 24-inch high rail. The anchor itself is galvanized with dual flukes. Under the hatch is a windlass mounted to a center bridge with easy access to the road locker beneath. The sliding door to the interior opens and a separate panel widens the entry to 2 feet 11 inches. We step down into the interior and it represents a modest gathering area, but let's not lose sight of the fact that this isn't a large boat, so the use of space here is well thought out. Boost style seating is the port to either side of a solid wood pedestal table. To enjoy the views when underway, simply reverse the removable forward seat back. In either configuration, the support rails reduce the usable width of the 31 inch seat to 26 inches. Opening side windows and an overhead hatch open to provide ample ventilation in addition to natural light. And all this can be closed off with curtains and a slider. Access to pumps, through hole fittings and shutoffs are under deck hatches and I'd like to see these latched into place. Under the aft seat is a door to the master battery switches. Shore power connectivity is to the port side of the cockpit and can add much appreciated air conditioning. Over to starboard is the galley featuring a drying area that drains into the adjacent sink. An optional stove can be added if you feel strongly about cooking on board. The helm seat is hinged to provide additional counter space and notice the support strut. A Lexan panel creates storage in the side bulkhead. Below is a refrigerator and additional storage. The helm is to starboard and the operator will benefit from a dark paneled console. The compass is centered atop the panel and a 9 inch display is mounted front and center. To the left is a smart craft tack. To the right are the bow thruster control that eases her docking capability and a fuel gauge is just below. The engine control felt a bit far back to me at the dock, but at cruise it was much more natural. I do like that there's an opening side window. A footrest adds to her comfort level. At the deck is a removable platform to aid us shorter captains. Be sure to latch it in place when using it or it will flip up inadvertently. With it in place, the overhead clearance behind the console drops from 6 feet 4 inches to 6 feet. The seat includes a flip bolster and it slides fore and aft. The fuel shutoff is just behind the seat. The single piece windshield is a welcome touch. A brow extends 7 inches to knock down glare. Wipers have integrated freshwater washers. Missing from this equation are defogger vents. Below is a modest cabin with 3 feet 6 inches of headroom over the berth. There's sitting space at the foot of the berth that can be filled in to extend the sleeping space. A storage shelf runs along the port side. The head compartment features a sink with pull-out sprayer. There's storage underneath the sink and in a shelf behind the manual flush ceramic toilet. An opening port light provides ventilation. We measured an overhead clearance of 4 feet 7 inches which translates to 3 feet 2 inches of sitting headroom. The Antares 23 has a length overall of 27 feet, a beam of 9 feet 1 inch, and a draft of 2 feet 7 inches. 
With an empty weight of 4,776 pounds, 60% fuel and two people and test power, we had an estimated test weight of 5,887 pounds. With the 200 horsepower Mercury outboard turning a 15 by 15 prop, we reached our top speed of 35.4 miles per hour at 5,200 RPM. Best cruise came in at 3,500 RPM and 18.6 miles per hour. At that speed, the 6.8 gallon per hour fuel burn translated into 2.7 miles per gallon and a range of 182 miles. That said, increasing the speed up to 4,000 RPM and 23.7 miles per hour means an increase of 5.1 miles per hour at the cost of only one mile in range. We reached planing speed in 4.3 seconds, accelerated to 20 miles per hour in 6.7 and 30 in 12.3. She has a tulip-shaped bow that deflects water nicely with dual built-in spray rails and full-length running strakes. Her 11-degree roll into the turns keeps guests comfortable in all but the most heavy-handed maneuvers, and we did experience prop ventilation regardless of trim. Calm conditions on our test day prevented us from getting any meaningful opinion on how she handles chop. She did have a bit of a slight lean into the wind to cruise, so I'd like to see trim tabs added to allow me to correct that, along with correcting an uneven distribution of weight. It's easy to see why this is such a popular lineup, and this model's popularity in particular is now quite evident. She's a comfortable cruiser, capable overnighter, and there are clever uses of available space seen throughout. And that's my full inspection and performance evaluation of the Antares 23 from Beneteau. For Boatest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.